Welcome back. My guests on As It Happens Tonight are Congress of the People Leader Musiwa Likota and NAFCOC President Lawrence Mavundla. We're discussing land expropriation and the many different views on the issue. Now, Dr. Likota, you, you, I'm reminded of uh, that famous um, who is our people question yes. that uh, you asked in Parliament not so long ago. Uh, what was going through your mind as you were listening to people debating um, this issue? What, led, what, what exactly was the point you were trying to make? Well, what provoked that question was that uh, President Ramaphosa uh, in his State of the Nation address said that government under his leadership was going to take land from some of the people and give it, as he said, to our people. Now, the previous day he had uh, uh, taken oath and sworn allegiance to the constitution of our country. This constitution says that there's a common citizenship for all of us. Now, I asked I asked him, which constitution did he swear allegiance to? Because if it was this constitution that President Mandela signed in Sharpeville, it says that all of us are South Africans. Secondly, in terms of the Bill of Rights in Section 25, it says no one may be dispossessed of their property. And he had sworn allegiance to it. How then do you address uh, the wrongs of the past? How do you distribute land? No, the, the, let, me, let, me, let me take a little bit forward and say, circumstances, different circumstances of history brought lots of us here. And in 1910, we were declared one country. Some had been indentured laborers from India. When they came out of indenture, they had to walk and look for themselves, their great-grandparents, uh, put together something and bought pieces of land, just as that day he was saying. After the, uh, the, uh, the rulers of Lesotho signed protectorate status, those of us who were in the free state were ceded to British rule, like the Dutch were ceded to British rule and so on. Now, we now have to accept that through forces beyond our individual control, we became South Africans. We fought the struggles we fought to have equality of status, which we achieved at CODESA or at, through this uh, CODESA. And we then resolved that we don't need to go on fighting and killing each other. We needed to give every one of ourselves equal rights, and it's all set out in the Bill of Rights. And so that, that, so that therefore, once we create stability and peace, we could deal with the problems of injustice, of uh, uh, unequal status and all of that, in an atmosphere that is stable, that is peaceful, led by leaders elected by all of us as the people, a government that would respect the rights we gave to everyone under the Bill of Rights. But, but, but the question remains how, the how part, how do you redistribute land, given everything that has happened, which you've just spoken about now? Thanks, okay. How do you do it? First of all, that there were definite identifiable uh, areas in which this had been done. And we went up to the 1913 Land Act and legislations that followed subsequent to that. And we said, where anyone can produce a, a, any evidence, a title deed or something like that, that shows that this was the land that they owned. Because we know what the old what the government did previously. They drove the people out, they took those land, they registered them in uh, deeds offices all over the place and so on. They are traceable. If you take the title deed, you can go to the deeds office and you will identify that land. We then said, because the government of that time had sold these or parts of those land to some of those who could afford to buy it. By the way, no, nobody was given freebies after these lands were taken from, from us. They had to buy it. Then the government must identify that land. It must compensate those who bought that land, because the records are there to show that. Where it has, uh, as a result of investment, 
it, its its value has increased. It can be traced through the banks, and then what you do, you compensate those, take that property, and give it free of charge to the children or great grandchildren of those who were dispossessed. Isn't that what you are find, is what you are finding problematic with, uh, uh, you know, the, the the approach so far? Um, yes, I think uh, at the end of the day. You've got a situation, I, um, I don't necessarily think that it is true that the land was bought. Um, I, my, my, my grandfather, um, they came from the army and there is, a, uh, there, there is a land that was kept for them. It's called a reserve. They, so they were given that land, you know, when they came back from the war. Now, there is a lot of people who were in the army or elsewhere, including even the laws that were made in the mines. I used to work in the mines. There was a Job Reservations Act. So those kinds of acts were put in place so that the, the people would be compensated and given land. And, and, and I don't necessarily think everybody bought the land. I think the vast majority did not buy it. And as a result, I think it, it, our children will kill us if we go on that route, because it's going to take us forever. I think we, we, we've got a situation where in, we've got an obscure situation where 79% of the population doesn't have land, and a, a small minority have got the, all the land. There are some of the farmers who are my friends. They've got 65 farms, one guy. He's got 65 farms. And, and I don't think he bought that land. So as far as I'm, and in fact, by the way, before we put up a defense for people who, who, from whom the land can be taken, those people are willing themselves, they realize that it's unfair. They are willing themselves to say, have the land so that there can be peace, because there can be no peace and there can be no settlement in South Africa without justice. Justice has to happen. And the original scene where justice must happen is that the land was taken from other people and given to other people. Now it, justice must be done. Well, I'm, well, I'm not for a, a minute saying we must chase away other people. I'm actually saying at least we must have fair, a fair situation. Not people who are speculating with the land, not people who are just sitting with the land because um, we even have some of the municipalities can't have offices because their land belongs to some farmer. Can be, we be a bit more systematic? The first recorded uh, uh, expropriation by the white regime without compensation is the 1913 Land Act, recognizable as such. I'm not talking about the wars of dispossession because, my dear friends, we were not the only country that was conquered by the British. And the treaties that were signed and all of that became international law way beyond our control. We had to deal with the situation when in 1910 South Africa was declared a union. 1913, the, the, the acts were passed, but the heads of uh, bills were passed. If you look into the situation in the Cape before that, there was title there in the, in the Cape Colony, as well as in, in Natal. The land you call Zululand today, well, now you say, call it KwaZulu, mixed with Natal, you call it KZN, but north of the Tugela, that land remained in black hands. Don't go and take the land that by chance escaped in the sense that most of it is owned by blacks and so on. However, south of the, of the Tugela, Natal, land was owned uh, because that was still British rule. There was also some qualified franchise and therefore equality because anybody could vote as long as you could qualify. Now I'm talking about 1913 because there we have a record. Anybody who owned, who had owned land before then had title deed and those title deeds were, the land was taken but the title deeds remained with the pe people. That's why we, when we wrote the constitution we said those who can produce this evidence of that land. We must trace it and, and give it back. The second thing is, the category is this. The land that is, that is called like Ngonyama Land Trust Act and so on, 
That land, you do all we need to do is to give those people title because the king doesn't even have title for that. We've got to give them title. And the same point that was being made here by my colleague is that then they, they, they can use that as they choose. If they want to give title deeds, for instance, to the people that live under that, that chieftaincy, and, they, and the king can get uh, people to study that land, if it can be used to produce food and all of that, the whole of that community, under the leadership of their, of their, of their, of their authority there, can be used by the people to benefit themselves. But more than that, there's huge territory of the land of this country that is in the hands of government. Mm. And the Constitution re says government must be committed to land redistribution. Why can't the government identify millions of hectares that are in their hands and make that available to the people who, were, up until now, were confined to the Bantu stands and so on? Why can't he do that without taking the little bits and pieces that individuals like himself and and some others who escape by, by, by a chance or the other, without taking it from them. We must increase it by giving others more and including them. Do you, do you think that will resolve uh, the, the <coughs> issue? No, I, I think um, historically land was taken um, by force, and some people were killed in the black community. And that land must be retained. But this time, we cannot have a communal ownership. It must be a title deed so that we can put and improve the lives of black people. You cannot sit with a land that you can't use or mortgage and say you've, you own something because at the end of the day, we live in economic times where we must have wealth. Of course, yes. And, and, um, and in South Africa, we've got a worse situation where in the majority, even the stock exchange, we only own 2% of it because we don't have any part of it. If the day the land is taken and given to, to black people, our wealth status as black people will improve dramatically because we will all be able, people who are crying that the banks will have a problem, bank will have new business for the first time that they've never had. Because if you have business from a minority, and business from a majority, it's more business. Gentlemen, thanks to both of you for coming through. We've unfortunately yeah, uh, run out of time. And that brings us to the end of tonight's edition of As It Happens. My name is Vuyo Mvoko. Thanks. Mm -hmm.